Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. Pakistan's effort to unleash chaos in Jammu and Kashmir. Balochistan's natural riches and struggle for a better future amidst challenges. And China floods cause billions in damage, disrupt economy. For years, Jammu and Kashmir have striven to create an environment of harmony, unity and progress. However, Pakistan, in its bid to assert control and stoke unrest, has embarked on a destructive path of violence and chaos. The use of terrorism as a tool to achieve political objectives has been a recurring theme in Pakistan's approach, particularly concerning the Kashmir issue. A glaring example of Pakistan's intent to disrupt peace emerged on a fateful day, August 4th, when a major terrorist attack resulted in the tragic loss of three Indian Army soldiers during an operation carried out in the Kulgam district of South Kashmir. A report. Rattled by a peaceful and progressive environment in Jammu and Kashmir, Pakistan is trying every trick in the book to unleash violence and chaos in the region. As per different sources, Pakistan has stepped up operations in its training camps and is further strengthening the financial model for terrorism. Now its targets are security personnel and non-locals. A stark illustration of this challenge unfolded on August 4, as a major terrorist attack resulted in the loss of three Indian Army soldiers during an operation carried out in South Kashmir's Kulgam district. Acting upon specific intelligence regarding the presence of terrorists in the Halan forest area of Kulgam, security forces initiated a planned cordon and search operation. The ensuing exchange of gunfire with the terrorists, three personnel sustained injuries and succumbed to their wounds. तो आज रात के ढाई बजे उसका कुलीग मुझे कॉल करता है कि बोल ये बोलता है कि आपका भाई वसीम भाई जो है तो वो इंजर्ड हो गया है कुलगाम इंकाउंटर में तो वो हम इस वक्त बदमी बाग कैंटोनमेंट में हैं तो उसने फिर फोन काटा तो फिर 10-15 मिनट के बाद वो फिर मुझे वहीं से दोबारा कॉल करता है और बोलता है कि आपका भाई जो है वसीम भाई वो शहीद हो गया है रात के ढाई बजे हमें पता चला तो मैंने अपने घर वालों को नहीं बोला उस टाइम तो सुबह अजा होते ही मैंने सबको बोला फिर यहाँ ये वाक़ा हुआ है Just a day after this attack, Indian security forces neutralized a terrorist in Rajouri district. A search operation was also launched by the Indian Army and the Jammu and Kashmir Police to capture the terrorists responsible for the death of three army soldiers. उससे ये अंदाजा लगता है कि ये पाकिस्तानी टेररिस्ट है शूज इसके पाकिस्तान में कुछ मेडिसिन जो बरामद हुए हैं एसओएस मेडिसिन वो भी पाकिस्तानी मार्केट के हैं जिसकी बुनियाद पे कहा जा सकता है कि ये पाकिस्तानी आतंकी है The incident came a day before Jammu and Kashmir marked 4 years of the amendment of Article 370 On August 5, 2019 the Indian government revoked the special status of Jammu and Kashmir dividing it into two Indian Union territories, Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. After the amendment of Article 370, the Union territory has witnessed development at an unmatched pace, attracting investments across various sectors such as tourism, hospitality, retail and manufacturing. However, this progress contrasts with the objectives of Pakistan. as it provides an opportunity for terrorist infiltration into the region contributing to unrest intelligence sources reveal the existence of multiple terror camps within pakistan occupied kashmir from which terrorists infiltrate the indian side with the assistance of pakistani security agencies 
Adding to the security concerns, numerous confirmed drone sightings have been reported with these unmanned aircraft attempting to breach Indian airspace, often carrying drug packages near the international border. According to media reports, the past year alone witnessed a staggering 311 drone sightings for the confirming Pakistan's sinister plots vis-a-vis -vis the region of Jammu and Kashmir. Despite all the criticism at various global forums, Pakistan continues to employ terrorism as part of its state policy. In a sophisticated world where the other countries strive for peace, harmony and technological advancement, Pakistan's state policy of terrorism is causing violence and is fostering a sense of distrust worldwide. Moving on. China grapples with an unprecedented natural crisis as torrential rains lash various regions, leading to extensive flooding that has uprooted millions of residents and inflicted massive financial losses. The catastrophic floods have not only wreaked havoc on homes and infrastructure, but have also thrown transportation and tourism into disarray, casting a shadow over the nation's economic prospects. With the daunting aftermath of these floods, China braces for substantial economic repercussions in the foreseeable future. A report. A deluge of catastrophic floods has unleashed havoc across several provinces and autonomous regions in China, leaving no corner untouched, including the major economic hubs of Beijing and Shanghai. Millions of people have been displaced from their homes and are living in temporary shelters. Many people have lost their livelihoods and are struggling to make ends meet. The devastation wreaked by the torrential waters has translated into staggering financial losses soaring into the billions of dollars as critical infrastructure, agricultural landscapes and businesses bear the brunt of the disaster. The consequence of torrential rains on China's agricultural sector has aggravated the country's long-standing food dilemma. It is believed that Chinese may face challenges of feeding its enormous population against the limited resources. The deluge toll on this agricultural region raises alarms of potential shortages in grain and other essential food items in the forthcoming months. The Chinese government had earlier predicted the economy to grow by 5.5%, but due to the floods, they have lowered the expectation to 5%. The extent of the damage and how long the disruption lasts will decide if the economy growth goes even lower. This is a result of the climate change uh, which we are witnessing in China and many parts of the world. Uh, so the Chinese economy since the times of a pandemic has been going through a, a difficult phase I would say. It has been badly impacted. There have been internal differences. It has been due to external factors like the Sino-US um, uh, trade competition, the Western competition which is going on, uh, some kind of sanctions and stoppage of various uh, critical equipments and uh, minerals and others are being uh, introduced, which is going to have an impact on Chinese economy. Beyond the domestic landscape, the floodwaters are also causing a negative influence over China's export capabilities. 
vital seaports integral to the nation's shipping operations have been directly impacted by the inundations causing substantial shipping delays this ripple effect is expected to have a negative impact on exports in the coming months adding yet another layer of complexity to china's economic challenges Let's now talk about Balochistan, a province in Pakistan that is rich in natural resources. Unfortunately, Balochistan is facing numerous challenges since it was forcefully occupied by Pakistan in 1948. The people here have been facing unimaginable atrocities at the hands of the Pakistan army, exposed to extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances and custodial torture. The Baloch suffer but still choose to fight in the hope of a better future we have a report the baloch are facing unimaginable pains for the past several decades not only are they suffering from issues like poverty unemployment and illiteracy but human rights violations committed by the pakistan army are eliminating the baloch a majority of baloch who demand independence from Pakistan's forceful occupation are being targeted by Pakistani security forces the activists and intellectuals are being kidnapped tortured and brutally killed Naila Qadri Baloch an activist and prime minister of Balochistan's government in exile explains how Pakistan occupied the region and carrying out genocide of the Baloch हम इस चीज को क्लियर रखें कि हम पाकिस्तान का इंटरनल मसला नहीं है पाकिस्तान और बलूचिस्तान का मसला दो मुल्कों का मसला है पाकिस्तान ने बलूचिस्तान मुल्क पर कब्जा किया है आर्मी इन्वेजन के जरिए और ये इलीगल है तो जो हमारे इंटरनेशनल बॉर्डर्स हैं उससे पाकिस्तान को बाहर निकलना चाहिए देखिए बलूचिस्तान के अंदर के लोग जो हैं उनके लिए तो इस वक्त बलोच कहना भी बहुत मुश्किल है जो बलोची लिबास पहनकर या बलोची दस्तार पहनकर या बलोची शान से कोई बलोची शेर लिख ले या कोई बलोच हिस्ट्री के बारे में बात कर ले तो उसे तो एंटायर स्टेट कह कर उठा लिया जाता है तो या उसकी लाश मिलती है या वो उसका कभी वेयर अबाउट्स का पता नहीं चलता और लाश की भी ऑर्गन्स नहीं होते कई बार The people of Balochistan not only suffer by the hands of the army, Pakistan's current economic situation and its repeated borrowings from China has also proved to be a trouble for the Baloch community. Islamabad's repeated financial mistakes have forced the country to be trapped in China's debt trap diplomacy. China has invested billions of dollars in Pakistan. as part of its China Pakistan economic corridor project Gwadar city in Balochistan is being fully occupied by China and the indigenous Baloch people have been forced to shut their businesses and migrate to other areas Aapko kisne kaha Gwadar mein development hui hai Gwadar mein logon ko peene ke liye pani nahi hai Gwadar mein education nahi hai ग्वादर में कोई हेल्थ फैसिलिटी नहीं है हमारा जो पीने का पानी था आकोड़ा कौर डैम था जहाँ से ग्वादर को पानी मिलता था उस पर भी एक चीनी कंपनी ने कब्जा कर लिया है और पानी भी नहीं है जो ग्वादर की सबसे बड़ी लाइवलीहुड थी जो ज़िंदगी गुजारने का जिस पे डिपेंडेंस थी वो फिशिंग थी माही थी वहाँ पर दीवार बना दी है जहाँ हमारी कश्तियाँ खड़ी होती थी वहाँ हमें कश्तियाँ नहीं खड़ी करने देते जहाँ हम फिशिंग के लिए जाते थे वहाँ उन्होंने वो रास्ता बंद कर दिया है तो हमारे से तो समंदर भी छीन लिया है और उसके पानी भी बंद कर लिया है और हर जगह पर जो है इनकी वो है चौकियाँ हैं पोस्ट्स हैं चेक पोस्ट्स हैं कोई आए कोई जाए उसका जो है कार्ड्स चेक होते हैं बिल्कुल ऐसे जैसे आप एक महल्ले से दूसरे कूचे में दाखिल नहीं हो रहे ऐसे लगता है आप एक मुल्क से दूसरे मुल्क में दाखिल हो रहे हैं सबसे जो खूबसूरत वेकेशन थी वो ग्वादर में होती थी और वहाँ पर अब जो हालत है तो वो तो वहाँ पर गम है हर घर से कोई उठाया जा चुका है हर घर में कोई लाश गिरी है और म्यूटिलेटेड बॉडीज़ और ये जो सिचुएशन है ग्वादर की ह्यूमन राइट्स की 
گھروں کو بلڈوز کیا گیا ہے بہت بڑی بڑی جو آبادیاں ہیں ان کو ڈسپلیس کر دیا گیا ہے اور ان کو کوئی اس کا وہ بھی نہیں دیا گیا کوئی متبادل جگہ بھی نہیں دی گئی نہ کوئی اس ان کو پے کیا گیا ہے The Baloch are suffering both socially and financially. A large number of them who have migrated to other countries for their safety are now demanding the United Nations and other human rights organizations to protect the Baloch identity. They have high hopes from the international community as they continue to fight against repressive policies of Pakistan. The security forces have now started a number of operations to dismantle the network of Pak back terrorism. Islamabad is making desperate attempts to launch infiltration bids in the region. However, Indian Army, with the help of Jammu and Kashmir police, is putting an end to these terrorists with a commitment to upholding peace and tranquility in the area. In the latest, security forces in Jammu and Kashmir neutralized a Hezbollah Mujahideen terrorist in Poonj district. A report. Jammu and Kashmir has remained at the target of Pakistan's state-sponsored terrorism since decades. Be it deadly terror attacks, cross-border infiltration, or indulging into narco-terrorism, Islamabad has not deferred itself from indulging into anti-Indian activities. Recently, Indian security forces thought it a major infiltration bit along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir's Poonj district. Indian Army neutralized a terrorist affiliated to Hezbul Mujahideen terror outfit. The killed terrorist was identified as Munir Hussain, who was a self-styled division commander of Hezbul Mujahideen. According to police officials, Hussain had masterminded a number of attacks on security forces and was a close associate of Molana Daud, who in turn is a close associate of Sayyid Salahuddin, the Hezbollah Mujahideen founder. After the first light in which dead body of one terrorist was recovered, the killed terrorist was identified on the basis of police records as Munir Hussain, son of Satar Muhammad, a resident of Bagyal Dhara village. Punch. He was a dreaded terrorist a divisional commander of the Hezbollah Mujahideen. The individual had gone to Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir in the 1990s and has masterminded a number of attacks on the security forces. Input suggests that he has, given, he has been given the task of revitalizing the terrorist activities in southern part of the Pir Panjal ranges. Poonch akin to several other areas in Jammu and Kashmir, find itself entangled in the crossfire of geopolitical tensions and territorial disputes between India and Pakistan. Located in the close proximity to the line of control, Poonj has become a vulnerable hotspot for infiltrating terrorists who are determined to sow disorder and advance their objectives. Pakistani extremist elements have been directing their efforts towards Poonj district using it as a strategic point to destabilize India and exert control over the region. Indian security forces are of the view that due to the comprehensive counter-terrorism operations in places across Kashmir, terrorists are compelled to explore new territories south of the Pir Panjal range. Remarkably, Rajauri and Poonj districts within the Jammu region, once declared free of terrorism over a decade ago, have been jolted by a string of alarming assaults. In a tragic incident, Dangri village in Rajori district fell victim to a terrorist strike in January 2023, resulting in the loss of seven innocent lives. Subsequently, in April and May of the same year, separate attacks in Poonj and Rajori districts claimed the lives of five soldiers and five civilians, including two children. The relentless wave of violence has sent shock waves through the region raising concerns about security and stability. The region's enduring struggles against terror and the evolving tactics of extremist groups highlight the ongoing challenges faced by both local authorities and security forces 
as they strive to safeguard the peace and well-being of the populace. Now, ISI has targeted the region in Jammu, that is the Rajori and Poonch areas. The reason is that Rajori Poonch area is a very hilly terrain. It has many natural hideouts and it has a lot of undergrowth and forest growth otherwise. And it's very easy for a person to hide in there and spend a lot of time hidden from the security forces. Therefore, they have now focused on this region. Second is that after Hill Kaka, that was a big militant terrorist stronghold in the 90s, was totally vacated, all these terrorists killed by the Indian Army. They, that area has been a focal point even today for the ISA. They are of the opinion that they can revive terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir from the Rajorian Punch area. In a resolute mission to restore tranquility to the Union territory, Indian security forces are unwavering in their dedication. Recent developments reveal a series of operations spanning Jammu and Kashmir leading to the successful elimination of numerous terrorists including foreign nationals. Latest technology like surveillance cameras, night vision cameras, heat sensing gadgets are being used by the security agencies to stop infiltration by the terrorists and stop supply of illicit drugs from across the border. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We'll be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.